Joining us now, Roger Ferguson, former Fed vice chair and a CNBC uh, contributor. We're only now getting back, Roger, to uh, pre-financial crisis levels, which seemed very normal uh, before all, all that happened. Uh, yet it, it has been a big and a fast move on a percentage basis. Uh, is, is some of the, the angst warranted, or is it all business as usual, in, in your view? Well, look, I think you know, a couple of things are going on in the markets. First is, you know, finally coming to grips with the higher for longer story. Yeah, I observed that a lot of the market move occurred uh, shortly after the Fed's most recent meeting, where I think it was pretty clear uh, by the way they changed their outlook that they're expecting to hold rates higher for longer than the market had expected. And then obviously we continue to have for equity, for uh, fixed income market supply and demand conditions. So I think the economy itself is performing reasonably well and according to plan, in fact, very well and according to plan, slowing down, giving the Fed some optimism that they'll get to the 2 percent target. But I think in the process of doing that, the Fed has signaled uh, a higher for longer mindset. And I think that caught the markets off guard a bit. And now I think they're adjusting to that reality. Roger, <clears throat> do you think suddenly we realize that higher for longer means, you know, that this greatly increased debt service on our deficits and, and on our total debt, we're going to be paying those for longer. There's going to be no relief if, if it's going to be higher for longer. And suddenly, $33 trillion really comes into focus in terms of crowding out everything else we'd like to do with all of, with the re tax revenue that we raise. It's, it's most of it at these rates, at these interest rates, so much more is going to be already spoken for for debt service. And that suddenly that sinks in. And I, I, I think that causes rates to go even higher. So it's like a hideous feedback loop. Well, I'm, I think you're right. The, the reality is that uh, many, many participants, maybe almost all in the market, have been in during a period of abnormally low rates. Um, the last 10 or 15 years have been abnormal in the fact that rates were so low. And so now there really is uh, what economists might call a regime change, a regime shift, where people who have gotten used to money being, you know, free, inexpensive to free for long periods of time, now have to get used to what is historically a much more normal situation of rates being, you know, positive, both real rates and obviously nominal rates. Um, one of the implications is the cost of borrowing for the government, as well as for individuals and businesses, will be much higher than people had expected or gotten used to over the last decade or so. And to your point, yes, that also means that uh, the debt service level uh, and the interest that the government has to pay is going to go up and be a larger share of what the government spends overall, uh, which does have the kinds of risks you've talked about. Well, we need to finance everything. Who's going to be on the other side of the, the, the bond sales? We're, we're the, the, since the Fed's out of the market, basically, maybe they'll come back in. I don't know. Maybe they'll have to. But, you know, China, not what it used to be. Other, other countries, you can just go around the globe and, and see that we don't have the same. You know, we're going to have to. They may, they may do it, but it's going to, they're going to have to get paid more for it, which is why rates keep going up. Well, I'm not sure rates are going to keep going up the way you, you, you are concerned, but I think rates may stay at what looks by historical standards to be, or recent historical standards to be, elevated levels. But I think the thing that people have to remember is that the last 15 or 20 years were the abnormal period. And, the, you know, the economy, the global economy, the U.S. economy yeah. can function with higher rates. It's just a question of this transition being, but you know, relatively abrupt. Becky once said, I just want, want, want to add one more thing. I mean, we had a 25 basis point increase. That's all we've had recently, a couple months back. And, and the, the, you know, we saw 150 basis points. So it's not about whether the Fed does anything anymore. Isn't it sort of, we've called it unmoored, un, uh, you know, unhinged, that, that the bond market is no longer marching to the tune of what Jay Powell says. It's that the bond market is back. Judging risk, judging what, what uh, people need to get paid to, to take on longer duration bonds. I, I think that's a fair point. I, I think it's both things that are happening. You know, for long periods of time, I think the markets were discounting the Fed's uh, aggressive stance on inflation. Then they were you know, expecting a, a turn towards lower rates relatively quickly. And so it's both things, I think, Joe. First, it, it is 
uh, the Fed's expectations because they still do control the short end of the yield curve. And then the long end of the yield curve basically reflects that. Plus, to your point, you know, a number of other things going on in terms of basic demand and supply in the markets as the government continues to run deficits. So I would say it's a both and. Um, and, you know, those two things are interacting with each other, creating uh, this dynamic that we've seen for the last uh, period of time in the markets. Roger, you've got a pretty good idea about what the Fed thinks about all this. My question has been, is the Fed happy to see that the market is finally paying attention and getting to this long, higher for longer sort of attitude? And is there a point, if it's both, that the Fed is signaling and the market's finally hearing that, but also other supply and demand issues taking place? Is there a point where the Fed thinks, hey, this is not great if we're, we're truly unmoored, unhinged, um, unconnected from what the Fed's saying, I mean, that, that suggests that the Fed loses control. And I would imagine there'd be a point, maybe we're nowhere near it yet, but maybe there's a point where the Fed would say, this is not great. Look, I think there may well be that point at some, at some time. I don't think that point is upon us today, though, Becky. Um, if I've heard what some of them have said publicly, first, they're you know, curious to understand what's going on. Um, and secondly, you know, a, a number of them have said over the last uh, week or so that one would expect tighter financial conditions. That's part of the way that the interest rate moves are supposed to work. So I think at this stage, they're observing it. They'll take it on board in terms of their upcoming decisions. I don't believe there's a reason for anyone to panic just yet in terms of this being sort of out of control. Um, I think at the end of the day, the Fed can and will control you know, the interest rate expectations here, and I think that's a lot of what's driving this, along with, as you say, supply and demand conditions. Just that nasty GDP to debt ratio, ratio that, that we didn't have that before when we were dealing with these things. I and mean, it just seems like a much bigger percentage of everything we produce is well, going to go. And if you go into a recession, GDP goes down. And then GD okay. yeah, and rates stay high if inflation doesn't. I don't know. Even on a Friday, I'm... I'm uh, I've got a lot of anxiety, uh, Roger, but um, actually I don't. Well, Roger doesn't feel like, it seem like he does. No, Roger, <laughs> Roger seems okay. The sun's going to come up tomorrow, I think. Uh, Roger, thanks. Actually, it's not. It's supposed to rain tomorrow.